Right, what's going on, guys? This is Ebets HD coming to you with a tutorial that a lot of people have actually been looking for. That's how to do the like floor shatter effect in Baker's video called Versatile V2. Like a lot of comments are just like everybody who's uh, looking, they're like, "Hey, man, how do you do that like floor shatter?" And Baker's just like, "I don't want it to get overused, so uh, I'm not gonna tell you guys." So everybody's been speculating about how he does it, and every. For everybody's theory is that you use Cinema 4D and then render it out, but he gave the hint that he did it all in After Effects. So I did my own recreation of this, and um, I mean it's kind of it's pretty close. I mean, like the keyframing and timing of it's a little different, and the particle sizes are a little different, but that's something you can change all by itself. So if you look at my version of it, and you just got the shot and little twitch and it comes up and you get the shattering up which I mean is pretty close maybe a little depth of field in there would be a little better but um, I'll include that when I do the actual tutorial on this now I use that in I did this whole effect in element 3d which is like built into After Effects and it's a video copilot um plugin get element here so the first thing you're gonna want to do is like whatever you have your clip, you're gonna have it twixtered and synced and such. And actually, to start off, since Element can make 3D objects, but it can't really like break them apart and like do a little shatter effect. What I did is I started off in Cinema 4D with just a plain old just cube here. On, move that back in the center. Like a plain old cube here. Just maybe expand it a little bit. It's a little too much actually. Like, expand it like that, and then. Son of a bitch, my phone's ringing. Come on. <laughs> Alright, sorry about that interruption. So, once you get those cubes here, you're gonna wanna get the plugin for Cinema 4D called Throusy and break the cube up into, like, say, 500, 500 or so pieces. So once you do that, you gotta let it run for a sec here. It shouldn't take much more than 15, 20 seconds. And um, once it's all, what Throwsy does is it takes like a solid and it breaks it up into little like shards, I guess. And um, all those shards, you just export to Element and then you can keyframe the position and like scattering of them in Element. Because it's a lot easier to do everything within After Effects than just rendering it in Cinema 4D and um, like then ex taking it into After Effects and trying to put it in with your like composition because like it takes say like two or three hours to render something completely when you have that many pieces and if you want to change something you're gonna have to make like one little change and then render it all again so when you use Element you can just change the value and it always just renders right with After Effects so once you get your thing broken up. You're just going to want to save your project. I, I'll just save mine on my desktop. I'll just do a tutorial. That's C4D. And now you're going to want to go into After Effects and actually start playing with it. So I just started off like get a little pre-twixter to save some time because this is going to be a little bit of a lengthy tutorial. So you know, start off by making a new solid, solid, solid. All right, and just call it element. And then you're gonna want to go to your effects and grab element. Now, once you have element on there, you're going to want to go into your scene setup. Give that a sec to load. And you're gonna want to import. Hit the little tab that says import. And on your desktop, you can import the Cinema 4D file you made, which had all the broken up pieces in there. So once that comes in, you can see you just have your box, and that's it. Now, what you're going to want to do is, <clears throat> I there's a couple different ways to go about making your texture. Like, what I did is, for the texture of my objects, I just rendered out a single frame of the clip, and um, then I just used that as a texture. So, 
if you go to your diffuse then hit load from file I just did this as my texture for that because when you shatter it like you just want it to like blend in with your outside it doesn't matter like when you break it up into a million pieces you're not gonna see like the scope and stuff it'll just blend in with the surroundings and you're gonna do that same thing for this one just pick this and select your check select your texture so since you got this you what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have this solid on two groups, so group one and group two. Now this is pretty much all we have to do within the actual scene setup of Element, because now most of our like keyframing and stuff comes with the settings from Element. So the first thing you want to do is probably just move both your groups, group one and group two, down to say maybe like 800 pixels down so it's like just below if we move both of them under the particle replicator tab of course so it's just below the camera actually you're going to want to keep the group to a little higher say like 500 and now here's what the main like keyframing is you're going to enable the animation engine of your like of element and now what's going to happen is it's going to like animate the settings between group 1 and group 2. So if you start say at like 0, know, let's start out like over here actually. Have this be our zero value right here. Click a keyframe and then go forward say like 10 frames by hitting shift in the next frame arrow. And then turn it up to say 100 or like 50. I think I did 50. Let me check. Let's see. Alright, yep, I went up to 50. And so if you go up to 50 for your value here, we can hit U, we can see our keyframes, and then move forward like quite a bit and change it to 100. So now what happens is your solid comes up from underneath comes up quick and initially and then it slows down and slowly starts moving up well this is kind of useful but first we gotta shatter it so if we come under our group 2 settings here and we look under our particle look then you can see that there's a multi object tab and we're gonna enable that so now it will separate all of those things that we like uh, throw seed in Cinema 4D so that we can like separate them and like keyframe the size and whatnot. So the first thing I did is I turned the size to like 1.25 and then I did the random to about say 50% so that way you have different size pieces and such so I started off by changing the scatter Y up quite a bit to like, I think I did like 90 or something, like, let's try like 75. So now you get these parts scattered across this thing here. And if you do the same thing to the scatter overall, you'll get all the overall parts scattered too. So we maybe turn that up to like 50 so now we've got all your parts scattered and you can see that at the frame where the sh uh, where, at the frame where the shot goes off they come up quick and then they start slowly coming up now for this one it's a little messed up because my when I rendered it it had the counter UAV thing on there so you can see the counter UAV pieces in your um like shattered parts so that might not be the best example for the material you could probably go in there and change that let's take a look if we could go to this and then change our texture mapping to box let's see if that works any better or maybe to sphere 
Alright. That looks better. Now you just get the environment around it. So when you set that, it should look better. There we go. Now it's looking a little more built into the environment. Those are kind of dark, so we could add a levels to that. Kind of brighten up those pieces, make them blend in a little more. Turn this one down a little bit like that. And this back like that. And it looks better. Now, you can play with the keyframes about all your like displays and stuff, but in general, this looks pretty good. Now, hold on, I got something going on here. Alright, I'm back. Sorry about that. My brother was being very loud and annoying. So, looking at the animation we have here, it comes up, slows down, it's looking alright. But now, what we have to do is, it's looking kind of orderly, like, just shooting out. So what we're going to do is add some rotation random to it, so as it explodes out, it'll get some like random rotation. We could probably do maybe like 175 for that, so you get some rotation to that and one more thing we could probably add is some displacement to like spread them out a little bit so we can maybe do like 1.5 for the displace and about 25% for the random so now if we watch this comes up, gets little explosions, and it's about done. One last thing though is that the animation for this is coming in like see if we leave our active camera and go to the, like the top of it. Time, no, maybe not our top view, just we whoops. Alright. So, one last thing is, our animation type is directional, we're going to want to change that to uniform. So, like, all the pieces get shattered at once, and, like, it doesn't go from, like, left to right when it's exploding the pieces. They'll just all come out at once, and just slowly kind of come out there. Probably just spread this keyframe back a little bit. Now, one last thing, it kind of looks like poopy like these pieces in front of the scope and stuff so what I'm gonna do is since you had the clip has Twixter on it you can't mask clips with Twixter so you're gonna want to pre-compose that layer move all attributes to the new composition and then duplicate it duplicate it and then move it on top of on top of the element layer bring it up there like that so now what you're gonna do is mask out like where the element begins you get a little mask going around your gun so you can do this a lot faster than or a lot more detailed than me I'm just gonna do this like real quick So now, if you look here, like further down on the timeline. Oh, shoot. Add my mask. Add my element layer selected when I mask that. Shit. Delete that. We, go, we select this and then make our mask. Just do it as detailed as you want. I mean, it's a pretty short effect if you just make a shitty mask and feather it and not a lot of people will notice turn the feather up to maybe say 15 pixels and if we move forward to when our elements actually coming up you can see that our gun is behind or our gun is like first in the vision of what we see it's like the particles are behind our gun and you can keyframe the mask if you'd like to like Say if you could go here, keyframe the mask path, then move down the line a little bit and just move your mask over, cover up your gun a little more. 
so there you go that is the basics of the floor shredder I hope this was pretty close to Baker's Toots or Baker's Toots I don't know how do you Toots Toots how do you say it but what you can do or what I did is um, let me delete all these uh, little things here delete that grid too what I did is when the shot hit just so it there weren't like part you couldn't see the particles just coming straight up I added some twitch and CC lens along with my color correction just so you didn't see them come up right away like you could just after the effect was over you could just see him kind of floating upwards which is pretty close to what he has in his video so shot comes up like that and they're coming up as such now the nice thing about this is if you were motion tracking these like in the next part of his video right here you can see the little like particles moving with the camera and stuff is that element automatically like moves with the camera when you export a motion track as seen before in my video let's see here it's my motion track particles tutorial like everything automatically moves with the camera it's a 3d plugin so my example was that in this all the particles were motion tracked and moved with your camera so element is behaves the same way as with it moves with the camera so it your motion tracking gets automatic in there when you have your particles so they stay in one spot if you have a moving cinematic so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, if you have any future tutorial suggestions or any ways that this tutorial could have been improved, please, please feel free to comment. And um, that's about it. Thanks for watching.